Hello everyone, I'm Jordan and I'm a neuroscience student within the School of Biological Sciences, graduating in 2020. I've been asked to make this short presentation of myself, describing my experience of applying to medicine while studying for an undergraduate degree at Southampton. So I'll just be going through the steps I took before and during the UCAS process, some reflections with the benefit of hindsight, and how the University of Southampton was able to help with the application process that got me a place in medical school. I've known I wanted to study medicine since I finished my GCSEs. However, my first year of a levels didn't go so well. From my predicted grades for UCAS, I knew that I couldn't make a competitive enough application to realistically get into medicine as a college leaver. So instead, I chose to study a biomed related subject. And since Southampton was one of my previous top choices for medical school, I decided to go to the open day and see what biological sciences had on offer. I really liked the look of the modules available at the time and the research-led education as a Russell Group institution also appealed to me. I eventually made a successful application for pharmacology at Southampton, and later on switched to neuroscience. My plan was to use the three years of my biosciences degree to build up a portfolio of work experience, improve my grades at uni, and hopefully be in a stronger position to apply to medicine as a graduate. And I'm sure this is what some of you plan to do as well. From my extracurricular activities at college, I already had some experience and transferable skills that would be useful for medicine applications later on. For instance, my interpersonal communication skills had been developed through my part-time retail job, some voluntary work with children, and shadowing in a hospital, which also gave me some early insight into the roles and responsibility of doctor on the wards. However, I didn't have much hands-on work experience, so dealing directly with patients, and this is often listed as a requirement for many universities. So my primary aim over the next three years of my degree was to build up contact hours with actual patients that would allow me to use the transferable skills I had developed previously in the medical context. In terms of why you want to pursue a career in medicine, obviously the reasons you list down in your application will be very personal to you. Here I've given my own list of reasons, some of which are often shared with my fellow applicants. I always use the point about social good in that you are constantly making a difference to patients' lives as part of your job in a cause that's much greater than ourselves. It's such an honour to have responsibility over people's health, as this means that patients trust you implicitly. I also talk about my experience shadowing the hospital multidisciplinary team and how I'm attracted to a job with such a high level of camaraderie with your colleagues as you all strive to deliver patient care. You should recognise that, as a graduate, you have quite a few advantages over college leavers. You'll already have had an undergraduate experience, so you should have more appreciation for life skills like time management. You'll hopefully have discovered which study techniques are perfect for you as an individual. If you're a biomed student, you'll have covered some of the MBBS content already, and so you can see where your studies fit into the medical context. And finally, you'll have had three extra years to decide if medicine is what you want to do and so you can relay your renewed passion for the subject in your application. So now I'm going to talk about my personal application journey. Bear in mind that I started my degree at Southampton already set on graduate entry medicine and sought opportunities from day one. Obviously different people will choose to apply to medicine along different stages of their undergrad, so you can adjust my advice to fit your individual situations. In terms of the direct patient contact I mentioned previously, it's very useful to have a recent example of this that you can talk about by the time you apply to medicine. For some universities like Warwick, this is a key part of their entry requirements. Others like Southampton or King's College London are more holistic and focus on the transferable skills you may have gained from all manner of medical and non-medical work experience. Also, you should consider if you want to study on a four-year or a five-year program. Obviously, many students at undergraduate level will want to go for the accelerated postgraduate entry medical degrees, which are four years. Bear in mind that these have much higher levels of competition, as you are applying alongside people with all kinds of higher qualifications, including PhD graduates and allied health professionals. Often, the courses themselves are a lot more intense, with far more content crammed into your first two years, and you may have shorter holidays than your peers. As for standard five-year programmes, the competition is much less intense as the primary applicants will be college leavers. The learning can also be at a much more agreeable pace for graduate students, who may have already covered some of the content as well. However, bear in mind that your options in terms of student finance and loans are much more limited for graduates taking five-year programmes. In my first year, my work experience came firstly from writing for Wessex Scene, which is Southampton's primary student publication. This built my skills in science communication and conveying complex concepts to people so that they can understand regardless of their scientific background and education. I also got some direct patient contact experience by getting a contract job at my local nursing home. 
In year two, I continued to build up my experience and transferable skills in patient care through weekly volunteering placements at UHS Children's Hospital. I also wanted to show extracurricular interests, and so I took part in the BioSort Parenting Scheme for Freshers, as well as training as a student ambassador. These allowed me to develop my team working and leadership skills. Finally, I started going through question banks and past papers for a UCAT exam, which is one of the medical entrance tests you're required to take as part of your application. One bit of advice I've got for prospective med applicants is to log the dates and times you're competing for your work experience and get an official reference from your supervisor. This is so you can readily prove you have a recent placement if requested during your application. Finally, begin to think about who you want as your referee or new cast. This is normally your personal academic tutor or alternatively your supervisor from your dissertation or lab projects. Make sure they know you personally and can describe your motivations and suitability for medical school. If you're like me, you'll want to submit your UCAS application during your final year, so that if you get a place, you can start medical school as soon as you graduate from Southampton. So straight after my year two exams finished, I started preparing the various components for my medicine application. This way, I could get the bulk of the UCAS process done during summer and reduce stress at the beginning of year three. The best place to start is your personal statement, and you can use the writing to build talking points for your interview. To help you draft a document, I suggest you carry a small notebook with you during your work experience for you to jot down any reflection you have and lessons learned. That way, all the points you present during the application will be unique and personal to you. Interests and missions people a lot more. To help with preparation for the UCAT exam, I took a one day crash course about two months before the date I booked my test. This isn't essential, but it can be very helpful, especially if you pinpoint your weaknesses beforehand. I'd advise you to do your own research to ascertain which packages and companies are good value for money and which areas you need help with most. If you don't want to take on any paid help, most of the resources you will need are free anyway from official sources like the Pearson UCAT Consortium and the Medic Portal. So after I completed my UCAT and got the results, I calculated my test percentile from the official results for that year. These are released provisionally on the UCAT website during the testing season and official statistics are available once the testing cycle ends in autumn. I worked out that I was placed in the 66th percentile, meaning that I performed better than two thirds of that year's cohort. And I was also in the 17% of people with a band one on the situational judgment test. This is a decent score to apply from. However, from my research, I knew that most graduate entry four year programs wanted much higher than that. So to make my application as competitive as possible, I chose to apply tactically and only to standard five year courses, as my UCAT score gave me a better chance of getting into medical school at the undergraduate level rather than postgrad. To narrow down the four universities I applied for, I went through admission statistics from previous years, as well as freedom of information requests online, to work out which medical schools would be most likely to give me an interview based on my UCAT score, compared to those of previous applicants who have been successfully offered a place. That way, I was able to strategically decide on the four choices that eventually went on my UCAS form. At the same time, I applied directly to universities offering master's courses in Physician Associate Studies. This was my backup route in case I was unsuccessful in all four medical schools. So Physician Associate Studies is a two-year postgraduate degree in generalist medical practice and upon graduation you are able to work in hospital multidisciplinary teams or GP surgeries at the level of a registrar, supporting the work of consultants. Physician Associate Studies was also quite appealing to me as a career as you are working directly with patients and providing them with care so I could still use all of the skills and knowledge from my work experience to work in the medical field if I didn't get any offers from medicine. Fortunately, I didn't need to use the two backup offers I got from Masters in the end as I was invited to interview and later secured a place at Bart's Medical School at Queen Mary University of London on their five-year programme. I actually wasn't going to apply to Bart's initially, but through my research to strategically choose medical schools, I found that the UCAS score I got that year had been accepted by successful applicants in previous years to Queen Mary. This way, I was able to discard King's College London, which was my original choice, as I was much less likely to get in there based on the admissions data and the calibre of students applying to their medical school. If you don't get any offers from medicine and you're not sure on what your backup option is yet, you can always see if any medical schools go into UCAS Extra that year. That way, you can go through the normal process of clearing an adjustment in summer and see if you can get into medical school that way. It's a long shot, but your UCAS track and admissions test score will still be valid for that admission cycle. So I definitely say consider it because you've got nothing to lose if you decide to go that way. So here I've listed all the ways I know of on how the University of Southampton can support their students who are looking to apply to medical school. I definitely use your personal academic tutor as your first point of call, as they may know of previous biological sciences students who went on to study medicine, so you can definitely get insight from them. 
Secondly, you can take advantage of all the workshops and tutorials on medical school applications that are delivered by the career service. Pam Mafaru is normally responsible for biological sciences students and she gave some really great talks on personal statements and interviews during my application journey that were very helpful. However, as of when I was preparing this presentation, she was on leave. So I definitely check with Dr. Tambrello or any of the other employability staff to see who can help you when you decide to apply to medicine. You can also book appointments with the Careers Service at the George Thomas Building to get your personal statement reviewed or have a mock interview session. I personally wasn't able to do these due to COVID-19, but my advice would be to definitely treat the experience as if it were an actual interview and prepare accordingly so you can make best use of the feedback given at the end. Finally, Biosoc puts on a Careers Day every year, with the main event being an alumni panel. I'm currently on committee for 2019-2020 and I know in previous years we've got some medical students who've previously studied at Hampton to come back in and share their experience. So definitely consider attending that to gain insight into the journey to medical school. Now I'm going to go through all the ways in which you can put yourself in the best position for success during your medical application. Regarding my first point on gaps in your application, definitely consider that with regards to your first choice university you want to apply for. When I applied, my dream choice was Warwick, and they placed a lot of emphasis on verbal reasoning in the UCAT exam. So during my preparation, I really hammered that section to make sure I got the best subtest score possible for VR, and be as competitive as possible for Warwick admissions. They are also one of the schools that make direct patient exposure a mandatory point of their entry requirements, so by the time of my application, I made sure I had three separate and recent experiences to provide and address that key point. On my third point about contributing to the university, this is a really rewarding way to build up your transferable skills and also make sure you have a good reference from the staff. I did this by working as a course rep and at UCAS visit days, so that was really helpful for me to build up my relationships with staff and other students, as well as demonstrate my passion for extracurricular activities. Finally, just make sure you're up to date with recent NHS affairs and the latest biomedical research. So I did my interviews during the COVID-19 pandemic, and beforehand I read up on Matt Crispin's lab on glycoproteins at Biological Sciences at Southampton, and how he and the doctors at Southampton General Hospital were instrumental in creating a vaccine to undergo clinical trials. Again, having points like this makes you a unique candidate and demonstrates your competence and understanding in biomedical sciences. So now I'm going to discuss something which I believe was crucial for my application and will undoubtedly be useful for others, and that's identifying your niche. And your niche is something that's unique to you that you can discuss in depth during your interviews so you can stand out from the crowd and impress admission suitors. I think focusing on and honing my passions is what got me a place at med school. Your niche can be anything from modules you enjoyed at undergrad or societies you're a part of or even research you've completed. This is another advantage you have over college leavers in that you have had the opportunity to carry out academic research, be that in your summer lab internships or your final year project, that may have been published by established journals or presented at conferences. You'll definitely know your research topic inside and out, so definitely consider using this as your niche during applications. For my personal statement in interviews, I talked about my extracurriculars in student journalism at Wessex Scene and in higher education outreach as a student ambassador, and how these experiences helped me develop my transferable skills. I also did some further reading on my favourite topics in year 3, so these were neuropharmacology and neurodegenerative disorders like Alzheimer's disease. For example, I took online courses in schizophrenia and addiction as part of my studies for Biol 3025 Neuropharmacology of CNS Disorders, and these really helped me engage fully with module lectures, while also giving me some talking points on the adult mental health crisis in the UK during interviews. Knowing your niche is a great thing for interviews, as you can really expand your points when they ask you a question that's directly relevant. It also makes you a lot more confident during the session itself, talking about what you're passionate about, so this is something very valuable to keep in mind. Here, I've listed some of the interview questions that I came across during my applications. My one piece of advice here would be to definitely know your personal statement inside and out beforehand. Some universities use it, some don't, but it's useful to hone in on the points regardless, as this can help build your confidence while forming the basis of some of your answers. To conclude, I've listed all the points that I believe are most important to consider during your medicine application. Firstly, start preparing as early as possible. You don't have to do what I did, where I played the long game over three years, but definitely build up your experience and skills across your degree to make the best application possible. Consider your shortness in medical schools. Focus on specifically meeting their requirements as a starting point, and from there you'll often find that your portfolio can be applied to any given university or placement you decide to go for. Don't be afraid to ask for help throughout the process. Email the admissions departments of universities you want to apply for if you're unsure of anything. 
network with university staff, current medical students and doctors to get as much insight as possible. Also use your support network of friends who may be applying with you. Learning from each other's weaknesses and strong points makes the whole thing a lot less daunting and you know you'll always have someone to talk to about medical school. Entrance tests are very, very important. These are the primary ways that universities can identify the best applicants. Always remember that an above average UCAT, GAMSAT or BMAT score will essentially put you through the door and remove one hurdle for you into medical school. Starting your preparation early is essential to pinpoint and address any weaknesses and help you decide on which universities to go for and whether you need any extra help through external companies or courses. Remember that these are tests of aptitude, not knowledge, and so can't be crammed for in the traditional sense. Know the different question types that come up, address the ones you're weaker on as a priority during revision. I've also added some extra points on using and reflecting on work experience during that application. So what do I mean when I say make the best use of your three years? Firstly, university is a great opportunity to mature as a person, so I definitely focus on getting experience and enjoying your degree, genuinely engaging with the subjects you're studying. Through this, you can find your niche that I mentioned previously, and also build your determination and motivation to succeed and get a place at med school. Remember that times will get tough, but working through these as stepping stones to success builds up your resilience and improves your work ethic for the future. Remember that all medical students and doctors will have experienced this at some point. Make sure to enjoy yourself and have fun. Building yourself up as a well-rounded person through societies and new experiences is just as important as academic achievement. Remember that if you don't take proper care of yourself and need an unbalanced lifestyle, you will burn out, which will negatively impact your grades and ultimately decrease your chance of getting into medical. And this is speaking from experience. Thank you for listening. Here are some useful links that I used during my application. I really hope you enjoyed this and found it useful. A final point to add is that everyone knows something you don't, so always network with other people and seek help where you can, as this goes a long way to set you up for success. I'm happy to answer any further questions through email or LinkedIn, but otherwise I wish you best of luck with university and beyond.